Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Oneida Aquino, but I'm going to be the con uh, city chair this, um, tonight for the personal committee. Um, to my right, there is um, Councillor Mr. Tumi, Councillor President Mr. Maldonado. Please raise for a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, I would like to obtain a motion for the, to approve the minutes. So moved. So, second. Motion have been made and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, first item on the agenda will be item 294-14, and it's the appointment for the Inspectional Service Department Director. Um, we have Mr. Pascual Ruiz, Ruiz I'm sorry, and it was um, sent by the City Mayor, Dan Rivera. We have the director, uh, the per, uh, personal director, Frank Morney, with us. If we have any questions, please um, don't hesitate to ask him to come to the podium. Uh, briefly, uh, Mr. Bonnet, um, is there a matrix uh, showing the candidates or the, or the applicants and... For this position here? For any other positions. We. You, you mean the certifications on the Excel spreadsheet and so forth? We I'm do that in our office. We keep that in our office, yes. I'm sorry? We have that in our office, yes. You have it in the office. The matrix that shows, uh, if you recall, we, we asked that. Certification of all the applicants. The certification the of applicants versus the requirements of the, of the job. Yes. How they meet those. Yes, yes, yes. You have that upstairs? But we provided that to the mayor's office, as we always do with the entire packet. But he wanted to send you that packet it was, that you it had was before not, you. For some reason, it was not. It was not. However, I got to just say that to us. Uh, Pat was the only one that applied for this position, so with this this one it really doesn't make. Would it be too much trouble to get it so that we can? Uh, I, I uh, can run upstairs and get it. So for this position, and I believe for the uh, OPD director, they were the only candidates that applied for that position. So the matrix is going to have one name uh, with their certification. Yeah. Okay. You, you still want that? Only yes, candidate. please. Okay. Only, only one candidate applied for this. One candidate for this position for the Director of Inspectional Services, one candidate for the OPD, and I believe four candidates for the um, Business and Economic Development Director. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Ruiz. Uh, Mr. Ruiz, why don't we begin by you telling us a little bit about yourself? Uh, your experiences. Uh, I know you have worked for the city for quite a number of years. So why don't you begin telling us a little bit about yourself? Okay. Um, I have worked for the city of Lawrence for 27 years. Um, I work in the code enforcement office. I've uh, been a firefighter, code enforcement officer, and a fire investigator. Um, also, um, some of my duties were to uh, inspect the nightclubs. Also, I was in, ch I was, I was in charge of also um, uh, Working, you know, working with, um, with the, in the schools, um, investigating all the fires in the schools, and um, and I was also assigned to, you know, um, when I was working in the schools, I had a unique opportunity to to monitor all the schools with the code compliance. Also, um, in the seven years that I was there in the in, in the in, in the fire department, investigating, I investigated over 500 fires. Um, we did um, back in 2006 when we had the major floods, the inspectional services uh, and the fire department, we, you know, we um, inspected over 2,000 units because of uh, all the damage and all the, um, all, all the flooding issues that we had down in the Arlington district. Um, also in 2000, uh, 2010, I was awarded 
the Firefighter of the Year by Exchange Club. Um, it was it was a difficult case that we that we uh, that we had. It was because uh, there was a serial arsonist in the city, and um, he also was um, uh, in Lowell. Also, we tracked him down, and um, he got eight to ten years. And um, that was a uh, was one. And then also in 2011, my colleagues and I, inspectional service, uh, the the inspection. Um, the fire inspectors in the fire department, we also received the Firefighter Year Award also for the work that we, that we did there. Okay. Uh, in your resume, uh, you indicated that you attended North Shore Community College? Yes, I did. Uh, did you get a uh, degree there? Yes, I did. Uh, associate's degree. I'm sorry? An associate? Associate's degree in fire science. In firefighting? Okay. This position, Mr. Ruiz, is going to require a lot of supervision, not only of individual personnel, but also of separate uh, departments or portion of departments that are part of it. Can you describe <coughs> your, uh, your supervisory experience? Um, I've worked in property management for over 30 years. I've had employees under me. Um, you know, we super, I've supervised you know, them before. And uh, you know, we're looking to, uh, you know, to, um, you know, to, to work together as a team to get the job done. Um, How many people were you able to supervise at that time when you were, when you were a property manager? Uh, Museum Square first opened up, I was the maintenance supervisor there. I'm and sorry? Museum Square, when it first opened up about 25 years ago, mm -hmm. I was the maintenance supervisor there. And uh, I supervised about seven people. Seven people. Okay. Yes, the 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 security guards and the maintenance staff. Okay. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about? those areas of supervision that you're gonna be supervising if you are selected. Uh, what is your knowledge of the different components of the areas that you're going to supervise? Oh, you know, working in the fire department, um, I'm aware of the, you know, the building code and the fire code, mm -hmm. and I've worked closely with um, the building commissioner, the building inspectors, the health code inspectors. Um, you know, we've worked closely together to, you know, to work on different cases and different you know, issues that we've had with different buildings and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I feel that you know, I have the knowledge and, you know, training experience to, to do that type of work. I've done it. What do you think you're going to bring different uh, to this position? Uh, well, bring, you know, bring in a fresh set of eyes and, um, and just try to, you know, just try to get the job done. You know, um, I work, I've worked with these um, with you know, with the personnel there before the staff, I've worked with them. They they know that uh, uh, you know I, I take things serious, and you know and you know also um, you know we're gonna make sure that the people of Lawrence they have an inspectional service department that when they come in they're gonna be treated with you know courteous. Also you know when when they get you know uh, when they file complaints they get taken care of in a timely manner. Also. Um, uh, you know, if there's any issues, you know, they'll be, ta they'll be taken care of. Okay. Do I have any more questions? Mr. Toomey? Good evening, Mr. Ruiz. Uh, good evening, <coughs> sir. Uh, I guess I'm a little bit uh, confused by some of these um, re requests that go out for different jobs and where well, the qualifications state for bachelor's degree and people, sometimes the people who, uh, who are forwarded to us don't have it. Yes. And the same with yourself, okay? You have an associate's degree from- Well, I have an associate's degree in fire science, but right. uh, my training experience, I feel that meets or exceeds um, any degree that's required. 
This bachelor's degree is required. At, well, one of the positions that they're recommending here is a degree in public health, building construction, building design. Thank you. And a minimum of five years' experience of supervision. Well, if I am, if, you know, if I am appointed, I will be uh, take, you know, taking all. Um, I will be going to all these um, training and also get, you know, get certifications in the, in the building department. I have uh, experience in uh, the building codes, and the building codes. All you really need to do is interpret them. So, um, you know, I have seven years of uh, doing that as well. The fire, the, the fire codes also, codes and ordinances. Thank you. I see that most of your experience, I believe, um, is with the, is with fire. We well, have seven fire years science. of code enforcement. Pardon me. I have seven years of code enforcement with the Lawrence Fire Department and fire investigations, and I've been to numerous you know, seminars, classes. You know, uh, uh, we're uh, building building uh, department workshops, code you know, code enforcement workshops for buildings. I, I don't mean to be um, negative about about yourself, but. Uh, it's, it's my opinion. Uh, personally, I, I don't feel that I have the, the um, that I, I think I would be not doing my job properly if I voted for you, based on what I see here. So uh, it's nothing to do with you, it's just the way it came, came into us. The, uh, the, ap the application came down to us and everything is within it. Uh, so I, I'm not gonna be able to vote in favor of you, of you this evening. Uh, as I say, it has nothing to do with you. It has something to do with the with what's required, and it, in my opinion, you know, what you have does not fit the bill here. So I have to tell you that up front. Yeah. Okay. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Um, hi. Hi. How you doing? Good. I have a question. Um, uh, my understanding on application, it says you live in Haverhill. Yes, I do. Are you aware of the residency law? Uh, yes, I'm aware of it. But um, it's not in, uh... yeah. So uh, Pat had asked me that question because he was kind of concerned. Uh, he just finished buying a house not too long ago. And before he accepted the appointment from the mayor, that was one of the questions that he asked. And so my answer to him was that the city council had took a vote to send that up to the legislature because it needed to be changed. So right now there is no residency law, but in the future they may or may not be. Uh, so all I can promise him is that right now there's no residency requirement uh, for being in Lawrence. Not that we wish that he would move here, but uh, I believe the residency requirement requires a home rule petition uh, submitted to the legislator. I may be wrong. I'm not sure. Okay. Because you know that um, I don't know how you feel about it. Can you let us know how you feel about it? Say again? Can you let us know how you feel about it? Well, yeah. I, I lived in Lawrence. Uh, over 30 years, um, my uh, my daughter's here. She just bought a house in Lawrence. My son lives in Lawrence. He lives in in, in uh, Mount Vernon. My, my daughter lives in Colonial Heights. I love the city of Lawrence. I've worked here, you know, 27 years. I owned property here all my life. Um, I just moved to Haverhill, but um, uh, you know that's um, we will wait to see. You know, what, will you be willing to move back? Uh, no, I just bought a house in Lawrence. So I mean, I mean, okay. in Haver. So yeah. Because you know, if if g you get appointed, and the law gets. Well, I believe that I'm an existing employee, so I no. don't think that applies. It will go back as it was. Um, we we put the date on it. It's July first, two thousand fourteen. Yeah. It could pass three years. It's July first, two thousand fourteen. Uh, yeah, but I was hired in nineteen eighty eight, so I'm a, no. I'm a prior well, employee. Well, this is a new position, and that's why you, I want you to understand. It's a new position. It is a new position. I think maybe we should we, we could get some clarification from the city attorney's office because he would know well. Pat has taken a leave of absence from being a firefighter to become uh, or to, to to accept the appointment of the mayor. So I'm I'm not the legal uh, person to ask. Uh, you guys probably know more than me, and Mr. Body uh, probably was working with you on crafting that language up. Uh, so. 
I guess that would be a question for the city attorney's office. Yes. Um. Um, I'm looking, well, uh, that will be it for me now because that, that was one of my concerns besides all the other questions that my okay. counselor had. Right. Um, right. And uh, I'm I, I, have, I have a question, uh, sure. Mr. Bonnet. Uh, when I'm looking at the matrix, yes. uh, education, he completed an associate, but nevertheless, you gave him a one in education. Why is that? Does it say completed associates? I'm sorry? Does it say on his resume or his application that matrix, he completed yes. associates? No, not on the matrix, on, on the application, on the resume, does it say that he completed the associates? Did you complete the associates? Yes. Uh, then must, that's my fault. Yeah. So then, so. I, I score what I read. So it should be a three? Sh should be a three, correct. A three, okay. Okay, okay, thank you. Counselors, uh, what will be the pledge? I do have a. Oh. I'm not quite. I'm not quite used to this matrix. <laughs> Can you kind of go through it a little bit with us, Mr. Bonet? So, um, under the education, where he his highest education is an associate's degree, so he gets that. That's a three. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Can you yes. hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that makes his total score ten. Pardon me. It makes his total score ten. Well, I'm going across education, experience, bilingual, veteran status, et cetera. So under the education, under the area of education, associate's degree has a score of three. Is that correct? On this matrix? Mm -hmm. Yes, we just changed yeah. that from okay. one to a three. Right. Now, under years of experience, experience in what? Twelve years of what? I can't hear. I'm sorry. Twelve years of what? You 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 gave me uh, gave me five under years of experience. Right. And so so what you do is you look at the job description, and it's which is a should be in your your packet. Yeah. It includes the education and experience required, or I believe this one says a combination of both, or right. And so you take the education experience, and you go down and you give them that. Oh. The experience in what? In Just like the job description states, Councilor. The job description states? Right. So, so what does the, I don't have it before me, so if you want, I can read it to you, and we can go through this and debate the experience in education, but the certification comes from my office. I sit down, and I look, and I give the individual the appropriate number of points based on what I feel is conducive to the experience they require in the job. Most of his experience has been with fire safety, fire Code fire enforcement, stuff, right? right? In the fire department. Pardon me? Code enforcement in the fire department. Fire department. But it has nothing to do, the fire department really doesn't have anything to do with what the job is, director of inspectional services. Are, are you looking at the job description? I am looking at the, the in job description, the duties and the qualifications. Right, and so the job description reads as? I'll read it to you. Position is responsible for providing professional and diverse supervisory and managerial functions as the Board of Health Director and Director of Inspectional Services Department. Position's main function is to ensure the health and safety of the citizens of Lawrence through the enforcement of the sanitary code, building code, zoning regulations, and city ordinances, as well as Massachusetts general laws relating to public health under the position's jurisdiction. My question is, um, there's experience, you say, uh, yes, over 12 years of experience, so you gave him a five. Right. But experience in these, al these areas? No, building code and city ordinance, which is lined up in that, uh, in that uh, statement. Okay, a bilingual, I see that. Veteran, yes. And um, what's the status here for uh, EE? EE means a current employee. I mean? It's a short term, and HR means employee. I don't understand you. Employee, employee. Employee? Yes, employee. Yeah. Current employee. When you see an EE, that means that the individual is currently working with the city of Lawrence. Okay. If you see an FE, it means a former employee. Now, these, these matrix are not meant to come down here. These are uh, under the ordinance required for the personnel department to keep in the file. So when the state or the commonwealth acts for those and there's a question through MCAT or whatever, we can produce those documents. 
So that's, if, that's I understand, if I understand this correctly, if, uh, if there had been another applicant, he would, that other applicant would have gone through the same series here? I'm sorry. If you had another applicant for this position, if you did. Yeah, all, all the personnel department, what we do, what I do, is uh, I list all the individuals that apply for the job on that Excel spreadsheet or that spreadsheet. And I provide points based on what the job posting of the ordinance requires. I give those points, I add those, I add those scores, I go ahead and sort them by highest to lowest, and the top five scores are certified as uh, the administrative code 6.4 indicates. And so if we would have had more applicants, then you would have probably saw Pat's name as well as anyone else who applied. Okay. Yeah. Now I understand a little bit better. <laughs> Thank you. Um, are you also? I'm okay with it, but uh, my, rec my, my recommendation uh, would, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry, I have one more question. All right. Pardon me, please. Um, you've been working for the city, uh, Mr. Ruiz, for, uh, since 1988, right? Yes, I have, yes. Um, and you are the super, the fire investigator? I'm the fire investigator, yes. Are any other people working um, under you currently, or are you working by no, yourself? No, we work together as a team. As a team. The captain, the lieutenant, and myself. Okay. And you are in that position since uh, 2006? 2006, yes. Eight years. Eight years, yes. Um, I, what's your current uh, salary? My salary? Yes. Um, uh, well, about uh, 82000 82000 Yes. Okay. Because you know the, this position is from 70 to 80. So yes. you're currently fine with the... Money-wise. Oh yes. Okay. And I have one. Well, I have a couple more questions. Did you had an interview with anyone? Yes, I had an interview with the mayor. With the mayor. Okay. Um, we had a reorganization. Yes. Um, do you know what would be your duties? Like, do you have you sit down and look at the reorganization? Yes, um, I spoke with um, Teresa Parks, and maybe she could elaborate more on that. Um, no, I want to know. You don't have to go with a specific, but I want to know if you yeah, went through sure the paper. Yeah, I'm not sure of the you know, reorg, you know, the whole thing, but you know, we spoke about it a little bit. Okay. Do you, can you let me know something that you guys talk about the reorganization itself? Well, um, it would be, you know, Teresa Parks, uh, Abel Vargas, and myself, working together and tr trying to, um, you know, uh, work in the, you know, work the, uh, the, the inspectional services department, trying to, um, you know, make it run efficiently. Okay. Efficient and do you know who you're going to supervise? Say again? Do you know who you're going to supervise? Yes, I know, yes. Yes, the building inspectors. Describe inspect them? Yeah, the, the building inspectors, okay. uh, the building commissioner, um, the weights and measures, um, uh, person, um, uh, who else, uh, the, health, the health code inspectors, okay. um, the food inspector, okay. and um, I believe the licensing is under, the licensing okay. is also under inspectional yeah. services. Have you, um, do you know what licenses, like special licenses, you don't, you don't have to know everything. I'm just asking you to see where we stand in. Um, do you know all the special licenses that they ha currently have? Like, do you know? Yes, uh, I've, I've been in charge of the nightclubs for the sev last seven years, as you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, I'm involved in the whole process and from, from the beginning to the end until the final inspection, until the, the license is issued. So I, I know the whole process. Okay. Um, since you don't have the license, like special licenses, um, are you willing to go and get the, the special licenses oh, yourself? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Any, thank any you more questions? I don't, I don't have any more questions. Okay. I don't have any more questions. Okay. Uh, yeah. Counselors, what's the pledge? I make the motion to send it up to the full council without a recommendation. Without a recommendation? Without a recommendation. I'll second that. Um, there is a motion to send it up without a recommendation. It's been second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, our next uh, meeting will be? Uh, the second. September 2nd. September 2nd. Set, uh, yeah, we we'll expect. Uh, Mr. Ruiz. Mr. Ruiz? Second. 
Yeah, we expect you to be here September 2nd at 7. Okay. And that's I'll when we're going to have the final vote. Okay, I'll be there. The, uh, the full council obviously may have a lot, many other questions besides the ones that we have asked. Sure. So be ready to, uh, to answer questions that, that the other councillors may have for you. Okay, I will be. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, our next item on the agenda, it's 295-14, and it's the appointment for the Business and Econo Economic Develop Director. And we have with us Mr. Abel Vargas. This, his name was sent out by the mayor, Don Rivera. Good evening, councillors. Good evening, Abel. Abel, we had the, uh, the experience, already a little bit of experience uh, getting to know you, uh, but for the sake of those who are listening to this meeting, uh, please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, well, as, as you, many of you may, may already know, I, I, I was born in the city, born and raised, went to the Arlington School, Lawrence High School. I was a boys club kid, um, graduated from Lawrence High School, went to um, UMass Law, uh, graduated with a BA, um, went into the private sector for um, the last eight years, and I'm currently enrolled at the University of Massachusetts, sorry, at Southern New Hampshire University for my MBA, currently nine courses into um, receiving that degree, and I have about five courses left. Um, I've, been, I've been active in the community as well. For three years, I served as a member of the zoning board. Um, I've, um, I've owned multiple properties in the city, so I bring the perspective of, um, of a homeowner and a, and a property owner. Um, and that's, that's the short version. So you expect to complete your uh, MBA, hopefully made, uh, made of 2015? That is correct. And that's going to be in business? So Masters in business, business Administration with a concentration in operations, uh, supply chain um, and operations. Uh, Abel, can you describe uh, your experience so far uh, since you started working in January? Can you describe your experience, what, what has been your accomplishments uh, so far? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the experience has been great. Um, whenever you have an opportunity to, um, to wake up every day and, and, and serve and, and do the best that you can for the community that you love, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's great to be able to do. Um, so I'm, I'm very fortunate and grateful to have the opportunity to have this position. Um, and hopefully with your um, confirmation, I, I will be continue to do that. Um, but in, in, my, in my short um, stint as the um, formerly the business development director and, and now hopefully as the business and economic development director, um, we've, been, we've had the opportunity to, um, to, tell our, to tell the story of the city to, to quite a few people about the, the, the prospects of investing in our city, the prospects of, of our city experiencing economic growth. Um, and, and it's been great. Since, we, uh, since we've been here, we've, we've introduced a, uh, a downtown shuttle. That's uh, the first time we have a, a bus that starts in Lawrence and ends in Lawrence and travels the main business districts in our city. Um, I'm not sure if, you've got, if you had the opportunity to look at the, at the, at the, the map of the uh, MVRTA bus service, but the way it's designed, it takes people from the center of our city and it takes them other places. It takes them to Andover, Methuen, and North Andover, um, so what we try to do is make sure that those people are transported throughout our m main commercial districts because that service should be used to um, stimulate our businesses, not the, st not the businesses of people outside of the city. Um, so, so we've been able to do that. Um, we were fortunate enough to work with Asai America, who will be bringing with them 125 jobs to the city of Lawrence. Um, beginning on, in October, which is when they will have their, their groundbreaking o groundbreak opening. Um, and those are just, just a few of the, of the things that we've been able to do. Uh, what do you, obviously your position basically uh, with, has not changed. Uh, your position in the way that it's been presented now has, is, there's not much of a change. The function is the same, yes. Okay. Uh, can you tell me about what are your objectives, let's say, in the next year, next two years? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the objectives inherent in my position is really to, to um, um, build up the existing businesses that we have in our city, 
and um, and to attract new businesses. So it, at a, at a large at a large like um, you know fifty fifty thousand um, uh, from fifty thousand dollars the, the view that that's the inherent that's the position. But what, what I like to be able to do is is really serve as a um, as a proponent of business owners in the city, really provide them with the type of service that, that they require in order to be successful. And by that, I mean it, there's, there's a component of customer service to my position. So if a, if a business owner needs a, a permit or they need assistance or wh whatever it may be that they need, they need to be able to go to someone that's gonna, going to be able to help them and, and, and navigate them through the process. Um, and I hope to be able to do that, um, both, at, both for, for large businesses but also as um, with businesses that the primary language is, is, is Spanish. Uh, so I, I hope to be able to bring that. Um, you know, we, um, we, we try to market the city for the, the strengths that it has. And, and I, I do believe that the city has a ton of strengths that we can market. Uh, we have a strong consumer base. We have a, a great um, a workforce. So we wanna be able to take that information and present it to folks that are interested in investing in our city and doing it in a way that that um, that convinces them that they could come here and be profitable. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, businesses want to be profitable. So when we have these conversations, we have to do it in that context. Uh, can you please describe your uh, uh, management uh, supervisory experience? Yeah. So in, in my in my previous role, I was a, a, a I was a senior analyst. Um, and um, and I, I didn't have any direct reports, but my position was tasked with, with um, being the, the creative source behind some of the reports and, and the information that we presented. Um, my, my previous role was a, a supply chain analyst for a group purchasing organization within the healthcare industry. So um, our, our, um, our intent was to help hospitals save money on what they were purchasing. So I was, I, was, um, I was the lead in producing different types of reports to provide them with that insight that they need in order to, to, to be profitable hospitals. Um, so my role was, wasn't necessarily a, a supervisor but a project manager where I had to produce new, um, new ways of looking at things in a way that um, incorporated the input from various departments, receiving that information, synthesizing it, and, um, and producing documents um, and presentations that reflect that. Okay. Uh, how many people do you have under your supervision right now? Currently, it's, um, it's just two. Just two? Just two. Can you tell me who they are? Uh, not names, but... Sure, sure. So it's the, um, it's the Economic Development Officer 2, and a, we have a, a, an, an admin. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I don't, I don't have any more questions, Madam Chair. Mr. Mr. Tumi? Yes, I have one. Good evening, Abel. Good evening. Um, again, too, I'm looking at the duties on the, on the employee job posting. And it says promoting business and economic development interests within, within the community. Uh, first of all, let me state this. Um, In the, in the past, when other economic development directors have come before us on the personnel committee, not so much this, this group here, but in the previous, uh, early, my early years with the, uh, uh, with the council, um, I believe in giving people an opportunity, even though they might not be, have been in that position for any great length of time. And the last person I had given it to had been a council president for 10 years, so he had a lot of experience within the city. So I felt that uh, why not give him a chance to, do, to prove himself because he had a lot of contacts and he knew a lot about what was going on. Right. Um, but in, in, your, in your particular case, I, I know you're, you're very well qualified, you know, education-wise you have a lot of the, what's required here, but uh, I believe that you're lacking a lot of experience in this field. And it's a very, very important field for the city of Lawrence. Uh, we were trying to move ahead. Very, uh, we have been sitting still for the longest period of time, and we're looking to see if we can move ahead now. You know, so uh, to me, it would be much better if you were, for instance, working under an experienced person right. who had um, uh, this economic development experience, and then 
working under that person and then picking it up and moving off by, by, by yourself. Right. Um, so I, I'm, I'm afraid that, you know, from, from my perspective, it's... Um, and, and I can speak to that if, if you, you like. You can speak to that? Yeah, I mean, the, um, you're, you're right. The, um, the, you know, when you talk about Pat Ruiz, he's, he's had a ton of experience. Teresa Park has had a ton of experience. Um, and you look at my resume, it, it, it's not as, um, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's not as lengthy and, and, and as comprehensive as their experience, and I agree. Um, I'm, not, I'm not quite understanding what you're saying. I couldn't hear you. What no, you're the, the, I was just making reference to the fact that, that my, my resume isn't as comprehensive as that of a Ms. Park or a Mr. Ruiz, just because um, they've had the opportunity to, to work for a lot longer. Um, but you know, part, part of the, this reorg and, and the structure, the way, the way it is, is, is one, um, you know, my, my perspective as, as a resident of, of the city and um, as a, you know, the, the son of a person that owned, owned and operated a grocery store for 15 years and the nephew of taxi driver, I mean, it, it brings perspective that, that may have not been there in the past. Um, and some of that experience that you speak of um, you know, I'm fortunate enough, and I don't have an ego to think that I know everything, because I don't, um, but I have um, Mr. Barnes and I have Teresa Park there to really provide me with, with some direction and things that I don't know. Um, but I think the, the strength comes in identifying uh, problem areas, um, coming from an operations background, uh, identifying problem areas and trying to streamline and being able to collect information from various people, various departments, and synthesizing so that it makes sense to the end user. So you're right that my experience is as extensive as, as you may have liked or of other people you've seen, um, but I think that there are some intangibles that I have um, and then some other um, strengths that we have within our new department that I, I think they gel well together. Okay. Uh, going down that avenue, what uh well, let, let me put it this way. I have certain thoughts about what I think the city really needs. I think the city really needs. We have a very high unemployment rate in the city of Lawrence, a very high unemployment rate in the city. And these people need jobs. They need to work. Right. Okay. We don't have anything currently existing within the city that would be able to employ any number of these people. I personally feel that manufacturing jobs are really needed where maybe some of the educational skills are not, are not needed in these jobs. Right. We, have, we have the population and we have the, the facilities to handle them. Right. And do you have any intention of going down this line at all, looking for manufacturing jobs to bring into the city? Yeah, absolutely, and, and we've done some of that um, already. Um, you know, we, um, the, the mayor speaks about one of the pillars of, the, of our economic development strategy is this whole notion of, of regionalization is what? Regionalization. So, so, so working within not just the city of Lawrence, but also the communities that surround us. Because um, we, we want to make sure that um, when we reach out to companies that they come to Lawrence. But if they don't come to Lawrence, I would much rather have them come to Haverhill or to Andover, to North Andover, rather than go to the South Shore. So we, we've, um, we've been able to um, develop relationships with these other, these other cities. Because um, if there's a manufacturing arm in Methuen or Haverhill or Andover, North Andover, the workforce is ours. So, you know, our, our first, um, first order of business is to attract businesses to our city to fill the spaces in our mills, in our industrial park. Uh, but the second priority is to make sure that they stay in the valley. Okay, I understand that. Uh, which, is, which is a good idea, what you're talking about. Because if they happen to go to Haverhill or Lowell, at least the workforce can be drawn from here. At least people can be put to work. Right. But coupled with that is we have a very, um, we have a very low um, tax base. Right. And we, it's just something that we have to build up. And you do that by bringing business in. And not just small businesses, but you need to have big businesses compliant in here. And do you have any long-range plans to, that, that you can develop uh, that you can make us aware of that might be of interest to, to me? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the strategy um, is, um, you know, to be, to be honest, the, the strategy has been focused more on, on, on the medium, more medium-sized businesses. We'd love to be able to attract, um, you know, someone big that employs four or five, 600 people. But those are, those are difficult um, to be able to manage or, or, or to get. So we've really focused our efforts on, on um, a smaller size company and using the fact that we have low 
um, low commercial, um, the, our commercial space is, 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 is cheaper than other communities, so it allows smaller growing companies to come into our city, um, fill our spaces, um, and do it in a way that's not, that's not um, kind of intuitive to their growth strategy because of the high cost of communities like Woburn and Burlington. So we, we, we have been trying to reach out more to small to mid-sized companies because we, we just feel that we have more of a niche for that, um, although it would be great to get a, a bigger company. I guess I'm missing, maybe it's my hearing, but <laughs> sure. I'm missing some of what you're saying. You're you reaching out to smaller businesses? Not, not necessarily smaller businesses, but the, the medium-sized businesses that we think, because again, if, if you talk about either a, a big biotech Pfizer or, or you know, or, or big manufacturing like the, um, like the defense, defense count, I mean, th those are tough to, to attract and, um, you know, the, the, the infrastructure that we have for commercial space doesn't always lend itself to that type of production. High ceilings, big open spaces, you know, th those things we don't, we don't have a lot of. What we have is a lot of mills. Um, so it's, it's catered more to, to smaller operations um, that can maybe fill 50,000 square feet, but may not be able to fill what other, some of these other big businesses fill, which is hundreds of thousands of square feet. But have you got any of these lined up to come in? Well, the, 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 one, the one that we have lined up is, is Asai America. Is where? Asai America. They're the, uh, we, we came before the, the council for an application for a, a tax incremental financing agreement. Oh, that's the one over on uh, Industrial Park? Yeah, so, so, that, so that's the first one that we have. And we have a few others that we're in touch with that we're really hoping to land. But it's, you know, it's, 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 it comes with, with our... Um, with the ability of being able to sell the city and sell its resources. So you have others lined up like that business? To come we in? have others lined up. You have others in, in mind to bring in? Not that we're close on closing a deal, but, but we're continuously reaching out to folks to attract them to our city. Okay, All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Vargas, um, we have plenty of space, Absolutely. both for industrial large and small businesses to come in, uh, yet a lot of them are empty. Uh, and one of the biggest problems that we are facing right now is uh, some of them are being com converted to apartments. Uh, how do you feel about uh, putting a moratorium on, on converting <coughs> industrial space into apartment, into the, apartment uh, complex? Yeah, the, the administration, particularly the, the mayor, has taken a pretty hard stance on this. We've, um, you know, in our, in our short time here, we have been approached a number of times of the redevelopment of our mill space into affordable housing and market rate housing. Um, and and we've, um, we've taken this tough stance against that just because we're a community of 77,000 people with an unemployment rate of 12,000. Um, so we have a lot of people, so more people, um, is not as attractive as more um, productive commercial space. So we've been driving towards um, um, encouraging that type of use rather than um, residential use. Okay, thank you. I don't have any more questions. Well, I don't have any questions, but I do have comments about um, Mr. Garcia. Um, one of the things that really motivates me is to have youth working for us. We talk about the residency law, and we say that we want our, our kids, Lawrence kids, to have jobs, to have the opportunity to, to be able to be in high pay jobs. We have it now. I'm glad that you apply for the job. Um, you have the qualification, not the experience, but you have um, the energy, the passion, and I'm very happy that you're in that position. I hope, Appreciate that. and I, I have to say, I hope that continues because it's been, it hasn't been a long time, a full year, but so far, um, every time that I have spoke to you about something, I see results. And that, to me, that counts. You worked and um, being in a, to learn to be in the same way, sometimes with different thoughts, it's good. Right. And I think I have that on you. So you. I'll be, I will be supporting you on the full council. I do appreciate that. Thanks, Councilor. And Councilor, what's the pledge? I just have one other question. Okay. I just have one yeah. other question. No, no, that's fine. Take your uh, time. Mr. Vargas, uh, um, 
And under your, um, I don't know what this is, economic development professional things that you have here, you have core competencies. Um, I'll just read them off that you have listed, okay? Economic development, project management, process improvement, consensus building, competitive intelligence, new process development, implementation, data intensive and, uh, anal analytic analytics, analytics. Uh, cross-functional team support, project development and presentation preparation and delivery. Uh, maybe you could explain to me what, uh, what you mean by some of these, these things. Um, uh, do you have one in specific or just? Pardon me? Do you have any of specific ones or uh, everything? You, you know what I'm referring to, right? The, the section I'm referring to under, under your economic yeah. development professional? Yeah. Yeah, so one. the core competencies. <laughs> Well, like for instance, consensus building. Oh, I see what you mean, consensus building. Building uh, the consensus of different uh, people. Right. Um, and competitive intelligence. Right. What does that mean? Um, the um, part, in, in the private sector, part of um, being successful and, and being able to, um, to help your company be profitable is understanding what, what the competition is doing and being able to, um, to do the research and collect the information um, and report on the, uh, the scope and the breadth of the products offered by the competition so that we're bet the, the company is better prepared um, to, to, um, to compete um, in, in the open market. So okay. in, in, in the past, I've taken that role of, of collecting data and information from other companies and presenting it to senior management uh, to help us compete better. Okay, I got that one. <laughs> Um, let me see, project management, competitive intelligence, process development. <coughs> I can figure the rest of them out. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, I would like to make a motion to send uh, the name of Mr. Vargas to the full council with a favorable recommendation. There is a motion on the table to send that up with a favorable recommendation. Is there a second? Uh, the, there, there is a second to it. I will, I will second that. Okay, second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thanks, Councilors. Appreciate we'll it. We'll see you September 2nd at 7. All right, we'll be there. Thank you. Next item on the agenda will be item 296-14, appointment of Office of Development Planning and Development uh, Director, and we have with us Teresa Parks, and it was sent out by uh, Mayor Don Rivera. Teresa, it's nice to see you again. Nice to see you as well. I'm sorry? Didn't you come before the council once before? Yeah. For approval? Not for this position, for the previous one. Was it for this one? No. Yeah. November the Director of year. Office and Planning? Huh? Oh, I see. She was just here for just hired under the old, the old building. Yes. Uh, Theresa, uh, I know that when you came in front of us, uh, in my opinion, I was interviewing you for this position. <laughs> uh, and obviously, uh, I was very impressed uh, with your qualifications. Uh, if you recall, I was not too happy in the way things were done, but that's, that's, that's already in the past, and we are dealing with something new. Uh, so basically, uh, in my opinion, uh, I have already interviewed you, uh, uh, because again, I was looking uh, in the eventuality that you were gonna apply for this position when, when we approved the reorganization. Uh, nevertheless, I think that for the benefit of, of the people that are listening uh, to, this, uh, to this meeting, uh, I would like you again uh, to tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay? Great. Um, so, um, my name is Teresa Park, and I've been working in the city of Lawrence now since April 1st of this year. But um, prior to that, I have a history that actually I like to sort of go back a little bit to. Um, the time that I came to this country, because that's very relevant in my standing before you here today. 
Um, so my family and I came to this country back in 1973. And when we first moved to this country, we actually moved to the city of Lawrence. So Lawrence was my first home. And I have very strong, um, very positive impressions of my time here. Um, I went to the Frost School. I went to Weatherby School for part of the time. And so um, it, it, it created it sort of, it, it was a welcoming city for the time. And um, it sort of set me in the course of direction that brings me before you here today. Um, my family ultimately did end up moving, um, but um, I did end up going to planning school, um, subsequent to the planning school, um, worked in a number of different communities. Um, my first planning job was with the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, and so the city of Lawrence was part of that region. Um, my first local municipal experience was with the city of Cambridge, and I'll highlight a little bit of the um, experiences that I gained in those places that I think may have some bearing to what I may be able to bring to you to the city of Lawrence. Um, in the city of Cambridge, one of the primary duties that I was charged with was permit streamlining. And the city of Cambridge has something like over, like something like 112 permits, and what they were looking to do was look at it to see how they could be more effective in the way they handle permitting and licensing, and how they could be more responsive, how they could um, condense the time period for processing them without necessarily mitigating um, the compliance aspect of it. And the challenge, of course, was compounded by the fact that there were a number of different, I think there were six different city um, locations that, so that people would have to go from one location to another location to another location. And if there was any misinformation that occurred in any of those steps, it just meant it was very complicated, lengthy, and very frustrating for the, um, for the, for the individual. So I think some of that experience I think I could channel to the city of Lawrence in thinking about now that we have this larger office of planning and development and we're working more closely together, what are those areas of opportunities where we can make those improvements from a regulatory enforcement standpoint? Um, after the city of, um, of Cambridge, I went to work for the city of Newton. Um, there was a brief stint with the nonprofit organization where I work with um, business owners. So I got um, cut my teeth a little bit, I guess, with um, um, uh, with my work in Cambridge, but while I was with the, in the city of Newton, I also did additional economic development work in addition to telecommunications planning. So thinking about the fact that as we are moving on to the 21st century, a key utility item that we hadn't thought about before was the telecommunications infrastructure and how can we use it, manage it, upgrade it, and have it available to folks so that whether it's from an educational standpoint, whether it's from a commercial, residential use, that you have a system that's gonna work for a lot of people. And that also included licensing cable companies and so on. But economic development was also a key factor where we worked to uh, make continuous improvements to the city and make it a more um, business-friendly city, um, and that involved everything from working with small businesses to trying to make some improvements to some of the public realms that's in the, in the city. And the city itself has a little bit of parallel to the city of Lawrence in the sense that it's made up of neighborhoods, with each of the neighborhoods having their own distinct identity. And so finding a way where you could recognize um, the, the, um, the uniqueness of those various neighborhoods, as well as thinking about the fact that you have to look at the city as a whole. Um, um, prior to coming to the city of, uh, most recently prior to coming to the city of Lawrence was my time with the city of uh, Lowell, and I was there for about set, for just over seven years <coughs> working as their economic development director. And in that capacity, I provide a staff of, um, you know, of folks that we work very closely with um, other organizations, including the university, including chambers and other groups to make it as economically vibrant as possible in the sense that, you know, Lowell, is a gateway city, much like Lawrence is a gateway city, and it has some economic challenges. It does have um, one, a higher um, unemployment rate. Um, it has um, hit some really hard times in its history, so it was trying to get back on its foot, and it has the same type of, um, I feel like this, there's a scrappy sp spirit to these gateway cities that I think that, um, well, we might take some punches, but you'll never keep us down type of spirit that I think is absolutely wonderful. In any case, so the, the work that we did there and uh, work that we did in working with some of the commercial property owners, working with developers, working with businesses, whether they're entrepreneurial and just getting started, 
whether they're an existing business and looking to grow or face some challenges that we're, help, we're helping them address, or new businesses that are coming into the city. Um, we were able to work with all the different types and bring in all our partners, whether it's in the workforce issues, whether it's in um, business development standpoint, accessing the research and um, training capacity that's available at the university, so that we, in essence, had a pretty powerhouse of strong powerhouse of an economic development team. And I think that in thinking about one of the priorities for the city and what the Office of Planning and Development can do, you know, economic development is a really important one. And so I think that having that experience, in addition to my permitting background, is in addition to my both my academic and uh, uh, professional background in planning, um, I think we'll all come together nicely in being able to serve the city. Okay. Uh, there is a um Looking at your contract, um, in item number five, the salary, it says that you're going to be paid 98000 which is basically what you've been getting now. Has there been any other commitment from the mayor as to whether you're going to get a stipend or not? No, there hasn't been any other. Hasn't been? Yes. Okay. The other thing is that the uh, termination number six, uh, Councillor Aquino made me aware that there is an error on that. Um, termination clause? I'm sorry, I don't have my contract with me. Yeah. It says, uh, it says uh, termination. It says at least 60 days, but it was put in parentheses 45 days. So it's 45 or 60? It's 45. So that's a, cor that's a correction that we would need to make, so sorry about that. We'll make rectify that. Okay, so the termination is 45 days instead of not 60. Okay. Is that, uh, Mr. Bonetti, is that a, uh, uh, for this position, is, is that uh, uh, a common uh, practice? Is or it common? <laughs> oh, I've, uh, I don't mean to laugh. It's just I've seen so many contracts, mm -hmm. and, and I've, I think some of these are abusive because they say, oh, you have to notify me like six months before. You know, who's going to remember that, some of that stuff, you know? So 45 days is pretty good. Uh, even 60 days is, 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 is really good. Uh, anything above 60 days? Uh, you know, do you feel that 45 days would be more than enough time to uh, to locate a replacement yeah. if uh, if See, she chooses to terminate her the position? The contract is between the mayor and the individual, so that's what the mayor's comfortable with the 45 days. That's what he's comfortable with. Well, we really yeah. don't know because it's like 60. Excuse me. It's at 60 it's, and 45. It's a it's an error. Yeah. yeah. So we need to make sure. I don't know. I can make sure that it's corrected and you have a good copy of, before the city yeah. council meeting uh, on the second. Chief of staff is here. I don't know if she's aware of the contract. Like, are you familiar with the contract at all? This has already been signed, right? Huh? It's already been signed. Yes. Since you're here, and I know you represent the mayor, sure. um, we have a problem. Well, we will have a um, mistake on the contract. Um, I don't know if you were a part of the negotiation. The direct um, negotiations between the mayor and Ms. Park, um, I do know that that was a point of compromise between the two parties, and they landed at 45 days. The number was corrected, but the, the written out language of that number was not corrected, and that is an error, just a clerical error. For our final vote, can we have a... Sure. Absolutely. They correct correct the one, copy. please? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Uh, one more question, uh, yes. Theresa. Um, you've been in the job now, uh, what, about five months? Close to five months, yes. Close to five months. Uh, can you describe your accomplishments so far in this past five months? Sure. Um, so in the very beginning, it was trying to think about sort of the reorganization itself and how that may um, play out for the city. So some of my early um, time and effort and energy was focused on that. Um, more recently, but concurrent to that, was also looking at some other opportunities that may be time sensitive that we wanted to take advantage of. So to that extent, to looking at um, funding sources to make some infrastructure improvements in the city where that had not occurred in some time. And that may also be tied to economic development. Um, so uh, we're hoping that some of our applications for that will be successful so that down the road, at least in the near term, that you will see some physical improvements to the work that I have been able to do. Um, 
And the other important piece is that as we think about this, um, you know, the Office of Planning and Development, is I think it's really critically important for me to understand the kind of work, kinds of work that occur in the various different departments. And to that extent, um, we've instituted everything from uh, regular meetings with the, with the um, directors. And so that's been helpful in gleaning um, uh, uh, the look at the, the work that goes on in the various departments. But in addition to be able to take the experience that I do have and lend it to those folks and the projects as we move forward. So everything from you know, weighing in in selecting the housing consultants, uh, thinking about uh, the kinds of planning that's occurring over at the Ferris site. So all those different kinds of projects, I have been engaged with the various different uh, department directors in, as they roll forward. Okay. Hi, I have no more questions. Okay, Mr. Sumi. Yes, I do, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I was looking through your contract and under the duties, do you have a copy of the contract? Yes, there? I do. Okay. <clears throat> Duties under Section F. Yes. T takes enforcement action necessary when violations of planning board approvals occur, including the monitoring of all residential, commercial, and industrial departments. Which one is that? So, uh, item 3, Duties, Section yes. F. F? F? Okay, I'm sorry. First page. F? That's uh, the second page. The second page. The reason that struck me is because um, there's a lot of things that go on within the city where plans are presented, but when the finished product is done, it's totally different from what the plan is. And I'll give you an example in a minute. And the enforcement of that falls on, I believe some of the enforcement, I'm not quite sure exactly where the enforcement falls. I know it's sometimes it falls under inspectional services. So is this something that that you're going to be taking uh, responsibility for? In other words, if a business uh, uh, comes before the planning board with certain specifications for different things and they don't follow it according to the specifications, mm -hmm. is this what you're refer uh, referring to here where you take enforcement action necessary to correct it to make sure that they follow what the plan calls for? Um, there are times when um, these cases come before the planning board and they're, as they go through the approval, they may be approved with conditions, for example, which means that um, they have to meet certain additional requirements or in order for them to obtain their special permit. And those are conditions that um, should be relayed over to inspectional services because ultimately inspectional services, um, they have the enforcement and code responsibility. So I think it makes sense that, uh, and this is where the synergy that could occur through the Office of Planning and Development could be really helpful in the sense that um, these conditions that are imposed on these projects, whether they be industrial, commercial, or residential, that there is a level of follow through that happens. So make sure that if we're saying that, you know, X needs to be done, that as we do these monitoring, as we do these inspections, that there's a system in place whereby they know that these are the conditions so when they're going out there and looking at these properties, they can make sure that these projects adhere as they go through the constructions, that per as they go through the construction period, that they adhere to them. Well, the reason I asked that, there's a, a specific thing I've got questions on. There was a building put up, okay? They came before the planning board originally, and what they were looking for was one level uh, it's like a, it's, it's a store, okay, and they wanted to have one level with a basement, and in the basement they were going to have refrigerated units, and on the first floor were going to be all their dry goods. Uh, they came back a short time later, and they wanted to do a second floor, which they got approved for on the planning board. When they finished with it, they added a third story without the approval of the planning board or anybody else. Now, the building is up, okay, so... Inspectional services is the enforcing, I believe, the enforcing uh, entity. So, what happens now when that building is up? Do, do you cave into? Would you cave into what they've done and say, "Don't do it again," or would you make them follow the plans the way they should be? Um, I don't know enough about that specific case offhand to know, be able to say, you know, what would have been the right thing to do. I think because there are so many extraneous circumstances with so many things, I think we need to pull all the information together to really um, 
uh, fully analyze what that situation is all about. I think the other thing is, the reason why we have some of these zoning and things in place is we want to make sure that the projects that, that, get, that get done is contextual to the neighborhood. Um, which is why we separate out the different uses. And I think I would think that one of the things that you would put into, one, I mean, all the, all the factors you would want to take into consideration is sort of the nature of, of what's been done, the kind of uses that are going there, the kind of impact that's having in the neighborhood, um, and then sort of pull all that together to find the right course of action. So what would be the right course of action in that? Well, like I said, I don't, I mean, I don't have you know, enough here, here information they are. on they, that. They, they, here they are, they came before the planning board, they got approval for a certain element, and they went ahead and did something else. Right. Totally different. Well, I, I, like I said, I, was, I would say that... Excuse me, if we don't stop it, it's going to continue. Um, I can't get... I'm sorry to say that I, I know you probably want me to give you a straight answer, but i just like to be as informed as possible before I give any kinds of answer in these kind of situations. Um, like I said, I think it's really important to understand the contextual aspect of these projects in the neighborhood. Um, I'd want to see whether there are um, other situations in that neighborhood where similar things may have occurred or in the city as well. Uh, what kinds of hardships are placed on the, on the business as well as on the city? Are there benefits that the city can, can um, get out of this kinds of project? I think it would be, um, I, if I, I would be irresponsible for me to say that, oh, they should tear it down because they were not in compliance, especially when that would be the easy answer. But I don't think that's necessarily the right answer. Well, you can... <laughs> like I said, I, I want to look at all the facts in the case before I would say one way or the other. You sound like a lawyer. <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> no, but I think we want to make as informed a decision as possible when somebody's livelihood or home may be at stake. Well, I, I, I can appreciate that, but the fact is that they didn't bother. This, these, a lot of times, uh, the people that do this just don't bother. They just go ahead and do what they want, and then they say, well, okay, I got it done, so now what are you going to do about it? Right. Well, I think if, if we took a hard line on some of these things, and put forth saying, look, you're going to follow the plans as you presented them. Otherwise, we're going to step in and we're going to correct it. Mm -hmm. And even if it's completed, it's going to be torn down and you're going to follow it. Otherwise, otherwise we get, we get not notice. This notification goes out over the whole city. And people can take advantage of it because they know they can get away with it. But it's not right. Right. But I am hopeful that as a result, and I think that's one of the reasons why we did consolidate these various departments so that cases like that are, are Less likelihood, less likely, I should say, to happen. I'm going to hold you to that because if I see something coming well, up, I'm going to crawl you know over what? If you. you. If you see something like that, please <laughs> let me know. We'll see what we can do. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, also, one other thing too: yes. here, under Section N, <clears throat> maintains a citywide housing and demographic database and familiar with the utilization of a computerized GIS system for the city. Yes. Uh, what's the GIS stand for? Geographic Information System. Say it again. Geographic Information System. Okay. Now, and it's just a way to spatially look at information. So, for example, one of the things that we could look at is we have all these, um, let's say, um, foreclosed properties during the, the foreclosure crisis that we had. Using GIS, you could actually plot those points on a map. So then you could see if there's a particular neighborhood that's being particularly hard hit so that ultimately if you have very limited resources and how you can channel it, you could basically say, okay, this is the most hard hit neighborhood and this is where we can make the most impact. So it helps with the decision making process. It also helps look at conditions in a much more strategic way. Um, I have been a strong advocate for a uh, housing study within the city of Lawrence. As a matter of fact, I approached Mr. Barnes, oh, maybe three or four years ago to see if he could help us with it. And I guess eventually he's going to be doing that. Yes, the there's study. a comprehensive housing study that's currently underway. Now, is that, would that be part of this, what this section is here, this? Um... They will certainly, as part of the data analysis and probably some of the output that we'll see as far as what's plotted on the map, we probably will see that included in the report. Okay. But it's a something, but what we have done is, we have, um, in the last couple of months, subscribed to, from the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, uh, a system called MyMap. And what that allows us to do is, is basically have a geographic information system 
on the internet. So the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission is working with us to basically take all our parcel information, upload it onto the map. We could add layers, everything from, um, there's a zoning layer, you could add layers for wetlands, um, and you could create these different layers so that you could actually spatially look to see everything from if there's a storm, what are the areas that may potentially get hit that we may have to really think about mitigating. Um, looking at housing, for example, there might be different housing conditions that you could classify and you could have that all um, categorized in the GIS as well. Um, so um, it's gonna be a really valuable tool and it's gonna be a tool that we'll have access to on an ongoing basis by, the various, by various different departments. Yeah, because um, Council President mentioned a little area about the, uh, the redevelopment of a lot of these mills into rental units. Uh, to me, there's, there's a, 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 a downside to that because if you, if you do make these units, uh, rental units, uh, affordable, people who are currently living in, let's say, a three-family home that's been um, a neighborhood for, let's say, 20, 30 years, it's, um, a little bit run down, hasn't been kept up, they could move out and move into these places and they're in this part of the city. Uh, it's, it's taking people from this portion and moving them into this portion, mm -hmm. but this portion becomes vacant, okay? And it leads to uh, spaces that are, uh, where people who own those homes could have a problem because they can't rent them now because these rental units, these people have already moved out. Whereas with a study, a, a um, housing study, we can see exactly where we stand with all types of units and from that point, then planning can be made as to whether or not we need any more. Yes, I think, well, I think the important thing is once we have this comprehensive housing study, it'll really give us a better sense of sort of the general, um, uh, the, looking at the city's housing condition as it is now, thinking about where our priorities should be, and then sort of maybe directing everything from policy to directing resources to uh, make probably improvements to some of these substandard housing. How do we handle our receivership program in a way that makes sense? How do we, um, you know, I mean, there are a lot of different types of housing programs that are out there, but having some basic, um, uh, up-to-date and comprehensive information on the, our housing conditions could certainly lend itself to, um, you know, us doing a better job at, in, in meeting housing needs. Right. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, Theresa, um, do you speak any other language other than, than English? I speak a little bit of a lot of languages. <laughs> well, so my first language was Korean. Um, I studied Spanish all through um, uh, junior high and high school, was conversant at one point. Uh, I studied Swahili when I was in Kenya. I took a year of French, mm -hmm. studied some Russian. <laughs> Wow. I'm impressed they didn't give you the point for that. I'm sorry? I'm surprised they didn't give you the point, bilingual point. <laughs> well, they're, they're, not, they're not. I would say <laughs> that my fluency is still very limited. Is probably, so it's probably correctly. <laughs> not, totally, there. not totally fluent, but. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. And I think it's also probably based on my application as well. So Frank's doing the right job. Yeah. Any more questions? Because I, I do have. I think she was the highest. Yeah, 10, yeah. 10. I was the only candidate, right? <laughs> but I do have but a question you. based on the application that we received and the evaluation that you did, Mr. Winnet, please. I didn't get the evaluation. Hmm? I didn't get her. Yeah, you got, you got um, no, Yes. Got huh? Under the education um, paragraph, it says years are completed and it's, um, it's not completed on the application. Yeah, I, I'm not seeing what you have because I didn't get a copy of the packet that you have. Um, the education, um, it's not completed. Like. And I just want to make sure, because yeah. we had a situation, I'm not saying that it's your case, but, but we they, had a situation with the controller's office. But there should have been a resume attached to the application as well. Was there? I mean, at least that's what the, Cause the, the uh, mayor's office uh, stated was going to go, the resume application, yeah. I just want to pass contract, it. Uh, posting. I just want to pass it out to you because okay. I want to make sure that we don't have. We'll make it, sure. I'm not saying that this is the situation, but it's part of your job right. to make sure that what is there, it's I got you. there. I got you. We don't want that again. All right. Okay. Nelson, I'm sure we'll see you. 
do you know what? Can you talk about the line that is not completed, please? Under education. So, so you're looking for, okay, Years so. Years completed. Yeah, so school name and address, right? Yes. Be in the school, and then the years completed is if someone didn't have a bachelor's degree and they only completed like three years, they would okay. put the three years well, in. Well, people had But the degree on the other side would be blank. Well, but we have, we have a situation, we had a situation before that we assume yes. that it was completed and it wasn't. Now the individual had put in f four years complete and on the other side where it says diploma degree, they put BS. So we're assuming that he had a BS and until we checked it, it was, it was found that But it's did. not in this case. No, we checked that, Masters right? in Urban, but we have, we have, we have <laughs> Teresa's, uh, we have her transcripts, so we requested it during the first time around when we asked her to provide it for the planning director job that she applied for. We, yes. we don't want. Yes. No, no, I know, we just want to make, make sure absolutely for the folks at home that we have all her qualifications on file. Right. Yes, and another question for you, and I, I want to ask you, it's um, about the benefits on the contract. I know you didn't deal with the contract uh, with her itself, like it was the mayor, but I want to make sure that we understand. H here says that it has three, three weeks vacation, right? But it also says that um, the same sick leaves, like the same, what are we talking, three more weeks? Can you? Uh, it it's on the contract. Be, it should be this, um, from what the it mayor. It says the same for sick leaves, right. um, personal time, and all the benefits provided to non-union employees. What are those benefits? What, how many so, weeks are we talking about? So in the same, just, just. Because uh, it's too here, general. Right, so. Under the, um, not the administrative code, but under the personnel regulations in the charter, there is a series of paragraphs, and off the top of my head, I, I really can't tell you, I, I can send it to you, that uh, talks about uh, sick leave, um, talks about uh, feeding leave, physicians, and things like that, the benefits. However, for the vacation, uh, when it was brought to you here for the reorganization, the city attorney on the ordinance provides that benefit of vacation and sick time, actually more, more like vacation because the sick time is already part of the personal regulations. So it's under the ordinance of how many weeks that individual receives. So you, you, you must have approved it. I just, you know, we have so many job descriptions, I can't tell you exactly yeah. Can what we this have this information was. for the final vote? Because I want to make sure that we. That was, sure, I can get to that. Because it's like, yeah. it doesn't yeah. describe it, each of them by right. itself. So we just want to make sure that we both on track and I, we. I know every, every position that's ordinance, the way the city attorney's office does it and the way Mr. Body has done it is that, uh, you know, he puts the number of the, the ordinance that's, that's going to replace it or is going to correct it. Mm -hmm. He puts the duties, the qualifications, and then the third paragraph has to do with the vacation, the salary, the grade, and so forth. So when we came down for the reorganization and you approved the ordinance, that ordinance there had that language. So when it comes to my okay. office, uh, the mayor says, hey, Frank, we're going to use the same basic contract that the city council just received from their attorney. Um, what I do is I cut and paste the job duties as was approved by the council during the reorg paste it out, so you'll see A, B, C, D, E, F, those are the duties, the same manner that you approved it, and anything there um, except for the salary because it's a contract and it's up to the mayor to negotiate that salary with the person should have been from the ordinance. But I can verify once again and send you those ordinances so you can match it up to the contract as well. All right, thank you. All right. Now I do have questions for um, Mrs. Parks. Um, on your contract says um, that you're gonna be reimbursed, reimbursed for the travel time. Like, can you give? Like, I know you live in Lowell currently. Yes. It's that gonna be you're gonna receive a stipend because of you live in Lowell, or it's yeah. other yeah. travel expenses. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, let me just take a look at that section. It's definitely not for. I'm guessing it has to do with if I had to go away for a conference or something along that line, but certainly not on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. And of course, the residency law. I have to ask you, because you live in Lowell. Uh, how do you feel about the residency law? As far as how it affects me personally? Yes, yes. Um, 
You know, and I, this question was posed to me um, at my last hearing, and I, I don't think my thoughts have really changed further, or my position has really has changed further in the sense that I don't think it's an easy answer that I could just give to you, much like uh, Councilor Toomey's question earlier. <laughs> um, because it basically is a person's entire livelihood that you have to weigh, right? So I think it's one of those things that when that time comes, I would have to take into careful consideration, um, sort of like all like the the the, the great work that's going on here and that could still continue to happen in context of um, my personal financial situation and be able to sort of weigh all of those factors in. Um, I think that's all the questions that I currently have. Um, if you guys have I don't have any more questions, no. We'll make, uh, a rec we'll make a recommendation. Go ahead. We'll make a recommendation that we send this up to the full council with a positive recommendation. Second the motion. There is a motion to send it up with a favorable recommendation to the full council. All those in favor say aye. 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 You guys have it. Thank we will you see you Congress. September 2nd at 7. Uh, Mr. Bonet, um, with your permission, uh, yes. in order to be fair to Mr. Ruiz, can you please confirm that uh, that that he completed his associate degree because, uh, again, uh, you had indicated I'm that. I'm going to re-verify that again because you brought it up. So please confirm I that. I thought so when I scored it, council. I didn't see it. However, if you look in your packet, what should have accompanied it, because I gave it to the mayor's office once again, and he can rearrange the packet anyway and send it to you, was a bachelor's degree equivalency. Is that attached there? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. It should be a, a white piece of paper, but it has blue labeling and says Black equivalencies and bachelors and so basically it, this is what my office uses if the job description the ordinance the city requires uh, education and and experience we don't use that however if it says a combination of an or mm -hmm. bachelor's or an experience and the individual doesn't have a bachelor's then we use a series of forms to verify that they have an equivalency so we talked about this one, one, one time before when we were talking about uh, performance eval, I thought. So let's say that it acts for an associate. So an associate, we know it's two years. You got to have a certificate. However, if you don't have an associate, you have the equivalent of experience, you have to have four. So you have to multiply the degree of years by the four years of experience. And I can't use that four years mm -hmm. again to give you credit for the experience. So if I use it for your associate, I can't give it to your experience. So in this case, Pat had well, over 20 something years of working. So he has a bachelor's equivalent, which is eight years that I took of his experience, which left a, a whole bunch more to give him some more points for the experience itself. No, I, under, I understand that you are using a combination but, of. But I'll check I, for the associate. I, because I, I just want to make sure yeah. that, that, he's be, yeah. that he will be giving credit. Sure. Uh, well, yeah, if, definitely, definitely. A completed associate degree. Right, and, and if, it, if it is, and I verify it, um, I will, first of all, I'm gonna ask them to provide it to me, but if it is, I'm going to make sure that your, um, your rating sheet there is corrected before the September 2nd meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, Mr. Bollet, um I'm a little bit confused here. Under the education element of his, of his um, application, he spells out uh, four years of a general high school diploma from Madison Park High, and then two years at North Shore Community College of the fire, fire Science, Fire Protection Safety, the National Guard and the Army Reserve. Now, what, you, what are you looking for as the, for the associate's degree, the North Shore Community College one? I'm looking for the word AS at the very end of that line. There's nothing he has, under major he has fire science and under diploma or degree it says fire protection and safety te technology. Does it say AS where it says diploma degree? Doesn't say right. AS Right, and, and that's all. what I'm saying. That's why I didn't give him the points for the associate's degree. But Mr. Modesto, Mr. Maldonado, Council Maldonado believes he has an associate's, so I'm gonna go back and check and recheck. And if he does have an associate's, then I'll correct my certification. But Originally, or initially, I gave them points based on what I have in front of me. And I can't assume that someone has an associate's if they don't uh, put it in the application. It doesn't spell out associate's. So, that's such. He spent two years there, evidently, but it was a fire science course that he did. 
What was the question again, Councilman? It wasn't a question. I said, the way this thing reads, it says North Shore Community College, two years, yeah. fire science, fire protection, and safety technology, I guess. Right. But if you look at your, and that's, and that's the official application, if you look at the resume, he should have under education where it says fire science in parentheses, he has the word AS on it. And that's what Council Maldonado is pointing out, that, that his resume has an associate's degree and I didn't catch that. I'm looking at his application, so I'm going to go back and verify mm -hmm. it and provide you with the correct information before the next meeting. Right, right. Yeah. You're referring to this year? I'm sorry? You're referring to this? Mm-hmm. You're referring to that, right? Yes. Where, yes. It, where it doesn't say it on his application, per se. No, I was looking at. I was looking at the. Um, See, it doesn't. It doesn't call out over here. Hmm? Right. Diploma degree it doesn't say. Mm-hmm. That's why. That's why I'm asking him to confirm that. Just it, to make that he sure has a social degree. Yes. Yes. So that he will be giving credit, appropriate credit, because he said that he completed his associate. Okay. Any more questions? No more questions. Um, so if there's no more question, I would like to obtain a motion to adjourn. All right. So awesome. move. Second. Motion have been made. And second, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Is Mr. Ruiz still, oh, he's still there. Can I see you for a moment, Mr. Ruiz? Sure.